Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching from JS to Remote Sensing. This is the first basic tutorial about the semi-automatic classification plugin and the classification of land cover. We are going to classify a Landsat 8 image. In particular, we are going to identify four types of land cover, water, built-up, vegetation and bare soil or low vegetation. The study area is Greenbelt in Maryland, USA, that is the site of the NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center that will lead the development of the future Landsat 9. So let's start the tutorial. So let's start with a brief description of the land cover classification steps from the definition of the land cover classes to the iterative phase of the algorithm training with the creation of ROIS, region of interest, with the photo interpretation, the assessment of spectral signature separability and the classification preview, then the classification of the whole image, the refinement of the classification and the accuracy assessment. This is the interface of the new SCP version 6. Here we have the SCP doc. You can install the semi-automatic classification plugin from the menu Managing Install Plugins. Here, once installed, you will have this dock with all these tools. This is the home of the SCP dock with this button that can open the main tools of the SCP interface. Here you can see the Benset tool and all these tools for download, pre-processing. But we are going to see this later. This is the main toolbar with tools for uh, RGB composites, regions of interest and classification previews. And here we have the SCP menu with the list of all the tools. And of course you can drag and drop the interface as you wish and you can place, for instance, the SCP dock here, beside the layers panel. And after this brief introduction of the SCP interface, now we are going to download the image. Here we have the menu, so here are the download products tools. Here we have the search parameters, with the upper left and lower right coordinates. We can click this button and select in the map the coordinates with a left click for the upper left and a right click for the lower right corner. As you can see here we have the coordinates, however we are going to enter here the coordinates manually. So here for the upper left coordinates we set uh, minus 77 for the X, 39 for the Y, and for the lower right corner, minus 76.9 for the X, and 38.9 for the Y. So here we have entered the search coordinates. Now we can select the product. We have all these products here in this list, from Sentinel-2, to Landsat images, Aster and Modis products. Of course, remember to enter here your login user and password for these services. Of course, free registration in order to download the products. And now we are going to select Landsat 8, L8, here in this menu. Next we can set the range of dates, we can of course select from a calendar, but we are going to set the dates manually, so here enter 2017, 4, 16. And the same date here. 
So we have set the range of dates. We could also set uh, the maximum cloud cover percentage here and the maximum number of results of the search. Now we can click this button here and after a few seconds we have the product list here, this product. This is the Lancetide image, of course acquired in this uh, date. Here in this table we have uh, all the information such as path and row and other useful information. If we click on this product, in this list, the preview of the image is uh, automatically uh, downloaded and displayed here. So we can see, for instance, if there are clouds in the image. If we click this button here, we can load this preview uh, directly in the QJS map. So here we have the preview, of course a low resolution preview. Here you can see the image. And now we can select in the download options tab, we can select the bands. We can uh, download uh, only the bands that we are going to use for the classification. So here we are going to leave selected all these bands and we are going to uncheck the band one, band eight, band nine, 10, 11 that we are not going to use in this tutorial. So now we are going to download this image here in the product list. If this option preprocess images is checked, the image is automatically converted to reflectance. But I'm going to uncheck this now. And because of this option, only if preview layers, as you can see, the preview is loaded in QJS. We are going to download only the images that are loaded in QJS. So now I can click run and now I can select the directory where I can uh, save the Lancet bands. And as you can see the download has started. After a few minutes the, all the bands are downloaded and loaded in QJS. Here, as you can see, all these bands with this uh, name. I can, of course, remove the preview that we use for the download. And here we have the bands. Now we are going to clip the bands for uh, our study area so that we are going to classify just a small subset of this image. In the CP menu we can select uh, the band set tab. Here you can see the main interface. We are going to create a band set here for clipping. So now I'm clicking this button to refresh the single band list. Here we have the list of all the Lancet bands. I'm going to select all the bands except the quality assessment band that, that we're not going to use in this tutorial. Now I click this button to add the bands to the band set one. Here we have the list of bands in the band set. And now I'm going to the, the preprocessing tools and select the clip multiple rasters tab. Here as you can see the select input band set is set to 1 so that we are going to use this uh, band set 1 as input. Of course I can create other band sets using this button here, as you can see, I've added new empty band sets that I can use for other processes. 
and I can click the X for closing the band set. So now we are going to clip this band set one. We have also the option for the output name prefix. And we can select here the clip coordinates. We could, of course, click this button here and then in the map, left click for the upper left and right click for the lower right point, defining the coordinates for clipping here. But in this case, we are going to enter manually the coordinates. So here I'm entering the coordinates for the upper left X. And the upper left Y. And then the coordinates for the lower right point, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. These coordinates are in the same projection as the images. Of course, I could use also a vector file for clipping. And here you can see the clipping region. Now that I've entered the coordinates, I'm clicking Run for selecting the output directory where the clipped bands are saved. Here, for instance, I'm creating a new directory, clip, selecting this, and all the clip bands will be saved in this directory. Here, as you can see, the process has finished, and the clipped bands are loaded in QJS. As you can see here, all these bands with a name starting with clip. Here, as you can see, the clipped bands, a very small subset for this tutorial. And I can remove these bands that we are not going to use in this tutorial. So now we are going to convert the bands to reflectance, the clip bands here. Now we are going to select the from the SCP menu the preprocessing tool Lenset, that is for the conversion of Lenset bands to reflectance. So here we can select the directory containing Lenset bands with this button here. Now I'm going to select the clip directory where we save the clipped lenset bands. And as you can see, the path is listed here. This message, uh, this red message informs that this uh, uh, required metadata file, the MTL file is missing from this directory. So we can use this button here to select the MTL file here this txt file, that is the metadata containing the required information for the conversion to reflectance of this band. This table is filled with this data here, and all this information that is used for the conversion of lenses bands to reflectance. Also, we are going to apply the DOS1 atmospheric correction, a very simple uh, image-based correction. We can check here this option. And as you can see in this graph, the DOS1 correction corrects the image band in comparison to the uncorrected values and the surface reflectance. As you can see, especially for the blue and the green band. So we are going to apply the DOS1 correction only to the blue and the green band. And then uncheck this option create band set because we are going to create band set later for the classification. And now we click run for selecting the output directory. I'm now creating a new directory reflectance here where all the converted bands are saved here. And the process starts 
after the conversion all the converted bands are loaded in QJS here you can see the bands starting with the RT in the name here we have the clipped bands that we can now remove Now we are going to define the band set in SCP. The band set is the main input of image bands. Here in the SCP menu, select band set. Now we click this button here to refresh the list of bands loaded in QJS. I select all these bands converted to reflectance that I'm going to add to the band set one. But first, I'm going to click this button, Reset, to remove the previous bands that we loaded for clipping the Lancet image. So now that I have removed the bands, I can click this button to add these bands, the converted to reflectance bands, to the bands at one. So this will be the input for the classification. Here, in Quick Wavelength Settings, I'm going to select the, the satellite. Here, as you can see, this long list of satellites. I select the Landsat 8. And as you can see, the center wavelength is automatically defined. This is useful for the spectral signature. As you can see also, the wavelength unit here is defined. So now that we have defined the band set, we can uh, hide these uh, single bands. And using this tool in the SCP main toolbar, in the RGB color composite, we can select, for instance, 3 to 1 for creating a virtual band set that is a virtual color composite, an image a color image that we can uh, display in the QJS map. And we can also change the color composite, for instance 432. This is a, a brief scheme of the color composite, which is the combination of visible colors and the spectral bands. If we click one of these buttons here, we can adjust the stretching automatically of the band set here. As you can see, we can uh, display the image. And we can select uh, the color composite from this menu. We can change the color composite for improving the photo interpretation. So here we can see the urban area, buildings, the roads, and the vegetation here in red. So now in the SCP doc, we are going to select the training input uh, tab. We can create the training input file that is required for the collection of regions of interest. Here, clicking the training input, we can see this button here for creating a new training input file. If we click this button, we can select here a name for the training input, for instance training, and click save. So now we can collect the ROIs inside the image. So for the ROI creation here, all the ROIs that we are going to collect will be listed in, the, in this table here. We can see the difference between uh, macro classes and classes, where uh, the macro class is a set of uh, link cover classes belonging to the same material. So here we can see the list of uh, classes that we are going to classify in this tutorial. So uh, we are going to create a first ROI uh, for the water, or the water class. In the SCP toolbar, we have this button here for drawing a polygon manually. 
and this button here for creating a polygon using region growing algorithm. So we can zoom here in this dark area. This is a lake, water. We can use this button to display better the stretching. And if we click this button here, you can see that in the map uh, the NDVI value, that is a spectral index, is displayed in the map. So we can see here that water has very low or negative values. And now we can click with the left click, create uh, a polygon here, and right click for closing the polygon. So now we can save uh, the Roy polygon in the Roy signature list. But first we need to set the macroclass information, water, and the class information, for instance, lake. And now we can click save to save the Roy polygon in the Roy signature list. So now the ROI is saved in the signature list and also the spectral signature is calculated and we can see here the information, the macro class, the class, the class information lake and the color that will be used for the classification. If we click here in the macro class list, we can see the first macro class, water, that corresponds to the first ROI here, the lake, which belongs to the macro class 1, water. And you can see that the class ID has automatically increased by 1. So we can now create a new ROI, for instance for the built-up class, So we can zoom, for instance, here. We have this uh, urban area, buildings. And we can click this button to create a ROI using the region growing algorithm. We can see the NDVI value, very different between urban area and vegetation in red here, as you can see, with this false color composite. You can see here the option in the ROI options that this tool displaying DVI is uh, activated. If we uncheck this, the value is not displayed. And if we check this again, we can see the NDVI values of the pixel below the cursor. So if we click here in any pixel, we can see the region growing algorithm. And this is a scheme of the algorithm so you can see that all the pixels with a spectral distance below a certain threshold are selected as a, a ROI. So if we zoom here we can see a very small ROI. We need to increase the spectral distance here so for instance 0.08 I click again and you can see the polygon is a bit larger. You can use this button here to show and hide the ROI. So now we can save this ROI, so we need to change the macroclass ID and we need to set the macroclass information. So for instance here we set the top for this macroclass and we'd also change the class information, for instance, buildings here. So we can click this button here to save the ROI, the ROI signature list. Here you can see the ROI polygon in black in the map and the buildings ROI listed in the signature list. And we can also see the macro class built up in the macro class list. So now we can create another ROI for the third macro class, vegetation. So we can zoom, for instance, in this part of the map here. We can see the vegetation displayed in red because of the RGB color composite.
If we click this button here, we can create a ROI using the region growing algorithm. So you can see here the very large area. So probably we need to we need to lower the value, the spectral distance value. For instance, 0 0.05. You can see here that a lower number of pixels is selected now. We can decrease again 0.03 the spectral distance and we can see a smaller ROI. So here we can see so we can, uh, for instance, save this uh, ROI polygon and change the macroclass code, so tree, change the macroclass information, vegetation, and of course change the class information. The class ID was automatically increased by one when we saved the previous ROI. So we change the class information here, for instance, trees, and we can click the save button here. So the ROI and the spectral signature is listed here. And also the macro class vegetation is listed here. So now we can create the fourth uh, ROI for the fourth macro class, bare soil or low vegetation. We can see that in this area uh, there is actually uh, no bare soil, but actually it is low vegetation. You can see here the low NDVI value. So we can create a ROI here, for instance. We can see the ROI polygon here. So now we change the macro class ID 4 and the macro class information bare soil. And we change also the class information, so for instance, low vegetation. So as you can see, the difference between low vegetation with a low NDVI value and uh, high vegetation with a very high NDVI value. So we can click the save button and the ROI polygon is saved in the ROI signature list and the macro class is saved in the macro class list. So now that we have saved a few ROIs, we can assess these spectral signatures here. So for instance, we select with a click uh, all these ROIs that are highlighted in blue. And we can click this button here to display the spectral signature plot. Here you can see the plot of each spectral signature, water, built up, vegetation, and bare soil. We can show and hide each signature with this checkbox. So for instance, we can compare the built up and the bare soil spectral signatures. We can see that they are very similar. We can see the center line and the semi-transparent color that is the variance of the spectral signature for each band. So if we compare all these spectral signatures, we can also assess uh, the spectral distance. Using this button here, so I click this button, and in the spectral distances, we can see the combination of each pair of spectral signatures where a set of spectral distance indices are calculated 
So we can see here, for instance, that the class trees has a very similar spectral angle to the class low vegetation. As you can see here, this value is highlighted in red. We can also display the spectral details here for each spectral signatures. We can see a set of uh, informations from the wavelength and values for each band and the standard deviation of each band and of course the count of the pixels of each uh, ROI, region of interest. So now that we have assessed these uh, spectral signatures, we need to create more uh, ROIs for uh, the land cover classification. So for instance, we can zoom here. We can change the RGB color composite from this uh, menu. So we can select, for instance, uh, 3 to 1 natural color, but we can also enter uh, custom values for the RGB color composite for instance 346 this is very useful for highlighting urban area and bare soil you can see here the difference between these color composites and now these color composites highlight the spectral features of the pixels we can also use this tool in the SCP main interface, the RGB list tool that allows to manage the RGB color composites. As you can see, I created a few more ROIs that are saved in the training input file. You can see here in the layers panel of QJS, you can see that the training input is loaded as vector in the QJS layer panel. You can see here I've created more ROIs. You can change the color composite here. So now we can uh, uh, create uh, the classification previews, but before the classification we need to change the colors of classes as we like. So for instance, we can change the color for the lake, the blue, and click OK. We can change also the color for buildings. For instance, red. And so on for all the other spectral signatures. We can also change the color in the macro class list, the color of macro classes. So if we use the macro class, then the classification will use these colors. We can change the color for the water macro class, for instance, blue, and so on. So once we have uh, set all the colors, We can go to the classification tab here. We can select the classification algorithm. We have uh, here this list. We can choose between minimum distance, maximum likelihood and spectral angle mapping. So in this case, we are going to use the maximum likelihood algorithm. Of course, please refer to the user manual for the specifications of each algorithm. And now we can use this button here to activate the pointer for the classification preview. We can now click in any point of the map. And as you can see here, a square is created, a classification preview using all these spectral signatures and of course you can notice that we have used the class ID so this classification preview used the class ID if we choose the macro class ID then we are going to use the macro classes and as you can see here the colors of the macro classes are displayed.
We can change, for instance, here the size parameter of the classification preview. If we click this button, we are going to create a preview in the same point. As you can see, the preview is larger. We can see here the classes, the land cover classes. We can use this tool to change the transparency of the classification preview. So we can see also the image below the classification. And we can assess uh, the correspondence of the pixels, the classification, to the image. And we can decide if we are satisfied with the classification results or we are going to create uh, other ROIs. Here I'm going to choose the, to use the class ID. Here you can see the difference. Selecting the class ID is useful for assessing each individual contribution of the spectral signatures for the classification. So for instance, we can decide to remove one of these spectral signatures that maybe can create classification errors. So if we click here this button, so we can see here the difference with another classification preview. Now that we have created all these ROIs and we have assessed the spectral signatures and the classification previews, we can create the final uh, land cover classification using all the spectral signatures. So we can choose here to use the macro class ID. The algorithm is already defined. So we can click this button here, run. If we click this button, we can choose the output file of the classification, setting the classification name. And we click save and the classification process will start for the classification of the whole image. Here, as you can see, the result of the classification is loaded in QJS. Here, the classification raster with the legend. We can see the colors corresponding to each class. We can see here, for instance, we can see, of course, that there are a lot of errors, classification errors. For instance, we have here these pixels classified as built up. We can see other possible errors of classification here. So probably for better results, we should collect more spectral signatures in order to remove these uh, classification errors. Well done, we have completed our first uh, land cover classification of a Landsat image. I'm going to write other tutorials about the use of the same automatic classification plugin and other case studies. Please remember that you can refer to the user manual. Also, for any comments or questions, please join the Facebook group or the Google Plus community. Also remember that you can contribute to the development of the same automatic classification plugin and the translation of the user manual. Thank you for watching.